Welcome everyone! Today we're doing the first steps to draw some pixel art with ProMotion NG. Before we begin, please notice that there's a very important information box at the bottom of the main window. It shows additional hints when you hover over elements of the user interface and it also displays information on how to use the tool when you're on the canvas. For our sample project, we set up a background color for the canvas to get rid of the transparency pattern. As shown before, you can also set up a background color when creating a project. In the Layer Windows Background tab, you can modify this setting and will select a medium light gray. If you're using a drawing tablet, then please also deactivate the pen pressure setting so that you have the same results like me, without pen pressure changing the brush tip size. The main tool to draw freehand is the Paint tool, having the default shortcut D. It just draws continuous strokes. We select a color from our color palette and then we draw with the current single pixel brush and this primary color. With the right mouse button the second color is used, which is currently set to be transparent. This erases the pixels we have drawn before. At the top left you see slots for the currently selected colors. Black is currently the first draw color and the secondary color index is the first color in the palette, which is defined to be transparent for this project. To change the color, just select one from the palette with either the left or right mouse button. You also see the changes in the top left color slots. When drawing on the canvas, use the left or right mouse button for their respective colors. To have the secondary color be the transparent color again, you can right click on the first color in the palette. Another way to quickly reselect the transparent color as secondary color is using the backspace key. The top left area with the color slots also has some extra functions to modify the two drawing colors. The arrow key allows you to swap the colors. The button with the transparency button also selects the transparent color. If you left click on it then the first color will be set to be transparent and if you right click on it then the secondary color will become transparent. Besides the color selectors there's the standard brush tip selector. By default, the single pixel round brush is active, but you can easily change the size of the brush with the number edit field and with the corresponding trackbar. When right clicking the brush shape button or holding the left mouse button longer, then a drop down menu appears that allows you to select some basic round and square brush shapes. Use the keyboard shortcuts shift and the plus key to increase the size or shift and minus to decrease the size. If you want to switch back to the single pixel round brush, then just press the period key. Use shift and period to use a single pixel square brush. When drawing with the paint tool, you can see that the lines are not clean. Some extra pixels appear when the direction of a line changes, and at these positions the line can look thicker. To prevent this, there's an option called Pixel Perfect Drawing. It will remove such extra pixels, making the lines look cleaner with respect to having single pixel lines. When drawing rough sketches or when filling out an area, then you can have this option disabled, but when drawing object details, then you should enable it. As an example, I'll continue drawing different elements of the tree with and without the option enabled. When trying to draw the filling, the pixel perfect drawing makes it more difficult because it's erasing the extra pixels so that you have to go over them again. Now let's press the S key to check out the second freehand drawing tool called Paint Dotted Tool. As the name applies, it doesn't draw continuous strokes, instead it places single brush dots based on a definition of spacing between the dots. The option dot space defines the minimum distance between two dots. We are setting this to 1 so that the pixels are placed side by side, similar to the paint tool. If we now set the dot space to be 8 and draw again, then you can see that there are corresponding spaces between the brush dots. Another important dot placement option is Brush Size Aligned. It will make sure that the brush dots are placed side by side depending on the size of the brush. So when we increase the brush to be 8 pixels and draw with this option, then you can see that it will let the brush snap to align with the dots that have been drawn with this stroke. In later videos, we'll use custom brush shapes when drawing a brick wall, and then this option comes in handy. The next tool in the group of freehand drawing tools is the Spray Paint tool. The default mode when using this tool is to place random dots of the current brush. You can define the radius of the area that it sprays on as well as the pressure. The pressure controls the amount of brush dots that are placed when moving the mouse while drawing or when clicking once on the canvas. 
You can see that the brush dots are placed more often towards the center point of where we spray. This is just like a real spray can would work. If you want the dots to be placed more equally throughout the area, then you can use the flat mode. The airbrush mode tries to simulate a kind of airbrush. It does not spray brush dots, but will apply the selected color on the canvas instead and mix it with the colors that are there. As mentioned before, only the colors that are available in the color palette can be used on the canvas. When the color mixing of the airbrush is calculated for every pixel, then the actual RGB color value is used to find the best matching one in the color palette, and this one is placed for the respective pixel. It may even happen that the colors that should be drawn as a result of the color mixing comes too close to the color pixels you spray onto. The result is that nothing happens. The result is therefore quite different compared to digital drawing packages like Photoshop or GIMP which do not use the palette limitation and can use the full range of the RGB color space. Still, you can create different sorts of blending effects using the spray mode when playing around with colors, pressure, and size options. Before we use the tools to draw some sample graphics, we'll have a quick look on how layers work. Layers are essential when creating all sorts of background graphics because it enables us to stack different portions on top of each other while still being able to modify these portions separately. There are two different types of layers, an animation layer having several frames that are switched when starting animation playback, and a static image layer where the frame content stay always the same even if other layers animate. The initial layer of a new project is always an animation layer. We leave it in place, but we give it another name. This can be done by double-clicking on the layer. Additionally, we create a static image layer and give it a name. Besides layers, there's another element called layer group. A layer group is like a folder on your computer drive, and it can contain layers and other groups. We just create one for now, and we will use it later. To add more frames to animation layers, we can use the plus button on the bottom right side where the animation control panel can be found. We add just two more frames by clicking twice on that button. You can see on the timeline that we have three frames overall and we select the very first one again by clicking on the number. Let's draw something simple on that frame of the currently selected animation layer. We hit the T key to open the Create Text tool. You can define a font in the text size of your choice, but be sure to make it large enough. A font size of 20 to 30 pixels will do it. We enter some text like a 1. Closing the window with OK will render the text into our brush and automatically select the Paint Dotted tool. Now we can stamp the brush down as we did before. Then we hit the number 2 key. It will just switch to the next frame. The number 1 key will switch to the frame before so you can easily switch back and forth with just these two keys. We go to the second frame which is still empty and use the text tool again by pressing T. We enter a 2 and create the corresponding text brush. When having text brushes you can select different colors and the text will change accordingly. We're stamping down the brush in frame 2. We go to the third frame and we'll create a 3 as a text brush. Select some other color and stamp it down as well. Now you can switch again through the frames and see the numbers changing as an animation. To also see how the static layer behaves, we select it. It does not matter which frame we're currently on because it is only using a single static frame. We still have the brush with number 3 active, as well as the option Brush Size Aligned of the Paint Dotted tool. Let's just draw a row of this brush at the bottom from left to right. You can see that the brush shape automatically aligns side by side. We advance through the frames again with the 1 and 2 keys and the static frame is displayed with every animation frame. You can delete layers by selecting them in the layers window and clicking the trash can or use the delete key. Please notice that the project must have at least one animation layer. The program won't let you delete the last remaining animation layer. We deleted the static layer and for showing how to work with layer groups we just add two more layers. The left button with the plus symbol always creates animation layers. You can select multiple layers in different ways. When you hold the control key then every layer you click on is added to the selection one by one. If you hold the shift key then you can select a range starting with the currently selected layer to the target layer that you click. When you click and hold on the layers, then you can drag them around and an indicator appears showing you the position you would move them to when releasing the mouse button. 
It will also indicate if we would drop it into a layer group when releasing the mouse button. This can be seen by the indicator snapping towards the group title display. We release the mouse button and the layers are moved into the group. Modifying the visibility of the group with the I button will modify the visibility of everything that is in the group. A layer also has some more options like the layer lock. If you click on the padlock button on the right side then you can apply the lock. If the lock is engaged you cannot draw onto the respective layer. The cursor also turns into a symbol that tells you you cannot apply the paint tool that you're using. If unlocked again the layer allows for modifications. Moving layers in a list to change their order works the same way as moving them into a group. Just select one or more layers and drag them around. The indicator shows the target position. The contents of the layers that are on top of others will cover the contents of the layers below. So moving layers up or down also changes the display result on the canvas. If you want to merge layers together because you don't want to modify them separately anymore, then you can select the layers, right click on one of them and use the function Merge Selected from the context menu. Another useful function is duplicating layers. Just select the layer you want to duplicate and use the corresponding function from the context menu. It will use the original layer name and add an extra character to it so that you can see what's the layer copy. Of course you can also give it any new name you'd like. You can also duplicate layers by holding the ALT key and drag the layer to where you want to have the duplicate created. Now let's draw a bit using the tools and functions that we mentioned before. This is a time lapse recording of course. We start with the blooming cherry tree. The spray paint tool can be used to create the little blossoms that cherry trees have in spring. We use a square brush that is 2 pixels in size. Selecting different colors and spray settings will lead to different amounts of brush dots being placed onto the tree branches. At the end the details could be improved using single pixel lines for thin branches of the tree. As a second sample graphic we're using the airbrush mode to draw some graffiti on a wall. For the start we just use some blue area as our wall. We don't need the details of the bricks. They will be added in some later tutorial. Because the airbrush combines the selected drawing color with the pixels of the layer, we must directly spray on that wall. But because I'd like to have my wall to be separate from the graffiti, I create a duplicate of the layer that contains the plain wall and use the airbrush on that copy. That's all for now. In the next video we'll start to have a look at more drawing tools like lines, curves, circles, boxes, and filling options. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this series then please like and subscribe.